Are you looking for quick and easy Halloween decorations? If so, in this video, I'm going to show you 10 ideas that are quick, easy and are made with items that most people can get hold of. You may decide to buy some in Dollar Tree or in Hobbycraft, places like that. I got a lot from the range here in the UK, but you can also find a lot of these items in thrift stores. Right, no time to chat. Let's get crafting. <music> This next project I'm going to use this tray it's a bit grubby I picked it up from the charity shop for about 50p a pound I never pay a lot There's two toilet roll tubes and a pair of monster slippers for 99p and some paper that I printed off I got the image from pixabay.com and then printed it off onto a little piece of copier paper I don't want blue slippers I want green ones so I'm going to paint this I tried this out on the other one I'll show you it came out pretty good that looks nicely green. If you open it up, you can see there's blue. If you wanted to, you can spend hours making sure all that's full. But I think it almost adds a little bit of interest. Places where it does crease. I'm going to use this cadmium green hair opaque from Studio Acrylic. And a brush. And I'm just going to paint my slipper. It sounds a bit crazy, but it really works. You really need to work the paint into the fur. Otherwise, it really doesn't go very far at all, and then the blue really does stand out. It's still not too time-consuming a job, though. I reckon oh, five minutes, and you'll get the whole slipper painted. Perhaps ten if you're going to be a little bit more thorough than me. So I've finished painting my boots. I've left the tops because I didn't want to waste paint. This is going to be under the table. Nobody's going to see it. Next, I need to tackle the tray. Now on the tray, to cover the fact it's so badly marked, I'm just going to use some scrunched up tissue paper and just dab on a pattern. Nothing in particular. It's not really supposed to be scales or anything. It's just green, a bit monsterish. This is very therapeutic and such a lot of fun. I think that's done a good job. I've definitely done a good job of painting my hands. And while it's drying, we'll get out our back legs. And this is why I've got some scales and I'm going to use some Aileen's tacky glue and cover two toilet roll tubes. If you struggle like me to be neat, then always make sure you your neatest edge is on the bottom. Make sure that one's straight and then it doesn't really matter what goes on at the top. Because those will be at the top and the bit you'll see will be the bits at the bottom. If you can't get a printable or you can't find something you like, you can always check out things like carrier bags or bags for life in some of the shops like Hobby Lobby, Hobby Craft. Because they've got some good images on those and you may find one you like. So I'm going to use some scotch glue stick that to the bottom of my tray if you want to reuse this every year I would recommend at this point you put some spray varnish or some sort of sealant on this because it's just printing it could get damaged when treats are being put on here it could get damaged in storage or if it gets damp it's going to smudge it a little bit so I would recommend that but I'm not going to do it at the moment because I want to get on with this craft I'm going to get my board out because this one slipper is still rather wet the first thing to do is to glue on your back legs so make sure you've got the front and back facing the way you want them and I'm going to glue these legs into place on the tray and when you're doing this it's a good idea to focus and make sure you get your legs the right way up which I didn't and I glued the bit that is not supposed to be sticking to the tray so when it cools a little I'll peel all that hot glue back off Lots of hot glue and glue the slipper area into this corner here. So now you've got a lovely child's treat tray for all the things they receive when they're out trick and treating. I'm going to let this dry as you can see it's still a bit wet and we'll see what this looks like up on my display.
quick and easy craft, I'm going to use this picture frame, this plastic placemat, this wooden decoration from Hobbycraft. It cost a pound, I thought it was quite reasonable, and some wooden letters. If you can get a frame that's exactly the right colour, that's perfect. I couldn't. So I'm just going to have to paint this black and then you've got to add on the drying time. So it's quick and easy, but you have to allow that. The paint does take a little longer to dry. I'm hoping to do this in one coat because somebody has already painted this into a midnight blue colour. So it's not far off black. And I may even get away with little bits of midnight blue showing through. While the frame's drying, I'm going to paint this black too. I'm going to paint these wooden letters. Lay them down in reverse onto your desk and then stick some masking tape to hold them together. Pick them up and now they are so much easier to paint. Now I'm going to place this centrally up. So I've marked top and bottom so I know where halfway is. So I can put my line coming down there, glue down the middle and then glue the edges. And then glue the other side into place. Now everything is dry. Well, almost dry. But we won't mention that. Now that the pumpkin is dry, we'll glue that into position. And next we're going to glue our boo. I didn't have an exclamation mark, so as you can see here, I just cut the bottom off the eye, moved it down a bit and called it a dot. I'm going to take some burlap ribbon, make a bow, just because I love a bow, any excuse. Glue the bow to the bottom of the picture. And then cover the pipe cleaner with a spider. Ooh, scary. I think this is bright, cheerful and not too scary. So <laughs> let's have a look what this looks like up on my display. quick and easy craft I'm going to use this six packs of skulls for a pound from what and I'm only going to use three of them I've got this wood round I'm going to glue the skulls like that so that the jaws are coming off the end of the wood round in the gaps I'm going to add some moss got this little lantern for putting a tea light in. I'm going to glue this to the scales. And then add more moss in the gap here. And then cover as much wood round as you can. Unless you want to show wood round, in which case don't. I thought I'd cover lots of it up. So it looks like it's on a pile of rock with some moss on that sort of thing. I glue this little wooden owl onto the front. There. And I think I'm going to take that off, put some more owls on, so that I can put this at an angle and it'll still look good. Right, let's have a look what this looks like up on my display. Halloween craft has got a lot of components. I'll show you them. The first few are not pretty. I've got this cauldron. It's actually a saucepan that I found. 
but you can see it's in pretty grim condition. There's lots of rust inside. I can't clean out rust all over the outside, but that is going to be perfect for what I'm going to use it for. When I bought some pillows, this was in it. So I decided to keep it in case it came in handy. I've wrapped it all up with a little bit of masking tape. I'm going to put it in the bottom of my cauldron and set that to one side. I bought loads of balls from a ball pit, two separate lots, and it's great because you don't always have to colour them. These are already in the colour I wanted, purples and whites. A set of lights and a green marker. A teddy bear and an outfit I picked up from a car boot sale for a pound. It's one of the bear factory little wizardy outfits. And this. It's the remains of a back scratcher. I've already cut the end off to use for something else. As you can see, these lights are white. I'm going to take my neon marker from Letra Set and I'm going to colour in all the light bulbs. You may be able to find a set of these bulbs that are green. I couldn't, so this will do the job. So now when we turn these lights on, they're green. Now to work on Teddy. So I'm going to cut his scarf off. It's just stitched on so he won't feel a thing. So now it's time to dress Teddy up in his wizard outfit. I think he's going to look super cute. It's not quite the right fit, but it doesn't matter because a wizard outfit is hardly figure hugging. He'll be fine. Now I'm not quite sure how this hat is supposed to fit on, so I'm going to adapt it by chopping off the elastic and glue it on at a jaunty angle. I do love a jaunty angle. bring my cauldron back and I'm going to fill it with a bubbling potion and the best way to make a bubbling potion is with pool balls when a few pool balls are in I'm going to pop the lights in and hot glue the switch onto the side of the cauldron and then top up with balls take some yellow pipe cleaners you haven't got to use yellow I thought the yellow was a nice contrast with the purples wrap them around a pen stretch them out pop a bit of hot glue in and put them in like that so that's our bubbling cauldron of potion now we just need to fix our bear. To fix our bear, I'm going to glue his hand with hot glue to the cauldron handle. Come over here. <laughs> There's not a lot of room here. I'm going to pop some hot glue onto the bottom of the wand and pop it onto a little wooden round. Trying not to get hot glue everywhere and failing miserably because otherwise you're not really going to get a very good grip. Then, stand Teddy up to the height you need him to be. But he looks as if he's looking into his cauldron, his legs are in the right position. And then glue his hand to the wand. And now you can see Teddy is stood up by his bubbling cauldron. And it looks like he's supporting himself, but he isn't. Right, let's go have a look, see what this looks like up on my display. seconds to say that if you're finding this video at all useful then please give me a thumbs up and why not subscribe because I put out a video like this every week. Right, back to crafting! For this craft I'm going to use this tinsel I got from the range. I'm going to use this old wreath base, this ribbon from the range and some black and purple leaves and a bag of spiders as you do. 
Also at the end of making this, there will be a little bit of help from somebody to hold this in place. I'm going to start by wrapping the wreath with tinsel. Just to give you an idea, this strip was 1.4 metres long and you can see it's done that much. So if you wanted to go right the way around, you would need to. I'm going to open up these Halloween leaves. It doesn't say how many are in this packet, so we'll find out as we go along. Now I'm going to glue them in place and sew a way that looks pleasing to my eye. There's no right or wrong here. You can do a rosette. You can just put them on really haphazardly. You can put all of one colour. Completely up to you. You can even make one of these wreaths really pretty or really spooky, depending on what you fancy. You know me, I do think I need a bow, so I'll make a bow. This little bit of ribbon around using hot glue to hide the pipe cleaner and hot glue it into place at the top of the wreath and I'm going to add a little bit of extra hot glue underneath the bottom tails just to give it an extra bit of support I think I could get hot glue everywhere if I wasn't using a hot glue gun look at this then take one of these spider rings and cut the ring off the back and just glue that in the centre. And now I need some help to hold this wreath up. And I'm going to use this chap here. He's very helpful. I'm going to put him holding the wreath like that. Just using hot glue. Surprise, surprise. And now a little secret, he isn't really going to be holding the wreath up, so we put a hanger on the back. Which I'll have to do off camera, because he's so large now, I could never manage on my desk. Right, let's have a look and see what this crazy wreath looks like up on my display. this craft I'm going to use an old bottle and an old sheet I've torn up into two inch ish strips it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be accurate and here are some I've already marked with a little bit of ink so I'll show you how quick and easy that is and this just you haven't got to do this you can have a gleaming white bandage if you like but I fancied a bit of dirtiness and age on it so it's really quick to do just run your ink pad up like that or you could coffee diet if you wanted it all solid brown it's up to you so now I'm going to use this rope this is an eight millimeter rope and double width like that should be fine put some glue on it poke it into the bottle like that you want to wrap the bottle completely in bandages I'm going to start by putting a blob of glue in the middle there put the bandage in and then come around the top angle was a nuisance so I decided to carry on and then come back and finish it off later. Now I take two ping pong balls, one neon green marker, you can use any pen for this really, any felt pen, you could use paint if you want to do or little stick on eyeballs. Draw a circle on the centre of both of them, roughly the same size. I suppose you could do alternate sizes, a big one and a little one if you wanted to, it'd look fine. The more weird the better. I'm going to draw a pupil in the middle. Then get your porky thing. 
make a hole in the back of the ping pong ball. That's just to let some air out. Now I'm putting some clean cloth over the top. Make sure the eyeball's facing up and give it a bit of a push. Making sure this part of your hand is rounded, otherwise you'll flatten the front instead of the back. There we go, it's one done. And for some reason, I can't dent the back of that one. Look, that was dented nicely and that one won't go. So I'm going to put them on like that. I think it'll be just as much fun. I'm going to glue the one eye on. It's got a nice flat back. Glue the one without the flat back to the one with the flat back. Now don't panic, it's going to get better. <laughs> At the moment it looks rather suspect. Now I'm going to draw a line of Aileen's tacky glue. I've got these little beads and I'm going to put these in a row like teeth. And now we're going to start wrapping again. Not in a musical form, unless you want to. You can wrap away as you're wrapping away if you want to. Wrap around the eyeballs carefully, leaving the coloured bit showing. And use a little bit of hot glue to just stick it where you need it to stay, because otherwise it's just going to fall back off again. Then do the same thing, but this time just exposing the teeth. And now I'm just going to dab a little bit more brown where I think there's not enough. Picking up on the creases and folds. And now we've got our silly, crazy, creepy, but a bit fun Halloween bottle. Let's have a look what this looks like up on my display. For this quick and easy craft, you need a scruffy piece of wood. Any base will do, but I fancy a scruffy piece of wood, it's perfect. If you can find some driftwood on the beach, that'll be brilliant. I've got a lollipop stick from a magnum, and I'm just going to chop the end off this. Then cut a two-inch piece of lollipop stick. Glue the short bit of stick to the longer one. I got these from when we had a lollipop, but if you can't get those, just a standard stick will do fine. I've made another one, and I got this which I'm going to use as a tombstone. I've just written some things on these to make them identifiable as gravestones and now I'm going to glue them to my piece of scrap wood. So you can take as much time over these as you want to, you can paint these up, you can make them more decorative, you can get some downloads of gravestones and then you can actually put that onto bits of wood. These are supposed to be for fitting loose covers onto sofas and chairs. I got them for a pound or a pack of eight so I thought I'm sure I can do something with those. Cut them into three and then round off the tops. If you can't get hold of these you can use packing peanuts. Now, there is one issue with packing peanuts which I'll show you. When it comes to drawing the faces, because they're made of like a potato starch, I think, the ink will melt away some of your packing peanut. But as long as you allow for that and you know what's going to happen, it's not too bad. If anything, it can add a little bit of interest where it's three dimensional. If I show you there, you can see the ink eaten in. And I'm going to make this into a happy one. I'm not a fan of scary Halloween crafts. I like them to be quite happy and smiley. There. But now if I do the same thing with these, there's no eating away of the fibre of it because it's just plastic. And now to glue this army of cute little ghosts on this side. Just to add a little bit more Halloweenish look, I'm going to add a couple of little spiders. Why not? 
that's a lovely quick and easy thing to make and the whole family can join in because they can all add their own little personal touches on the little ghosts and give them personalities so let's have a look what this looks like up on my display next quick and easy craft I'm going to use this Christmas tree I picked this up in hobby craft after Christmas for a pound remove the wood round from the bottom this is going to be like a dropper wreath it's going to go flat against the door and like a Christmas tree so we won't need to open up the backs of the branches but we will open up all the branches round to the front this will make a really bushy tree as well because they're just enough to get away with branches all the way round. If you're just going to be putting them to the front, there'll be plenty. Before we go any further, attach a hanger to the back and then we can forget about it because otherwise we'll have a lovely front of the tree and then we'll have to spoil it by putting it face down to get this hanger on. Don't worry about that being ugly, that's going to be covered up. I've got a selection of decorations and ribbons here I'm going to take the ribbons and cut myself some eight inch pieces, fold them in half, pinch them together and wrap them with some wire. Do that with a variety of ribbons. You may think, oh, I haven't got hand problems, so I'm not going to use the pliers to tighten these wires. But after you've done a few, you will get very sore hands, probably. So I would recommend you use pliers to twist the wire every time. So let's bring our tree back in and have a look at where we're going to put things. I've got three skulls so I'm going to spread those. Let's have a look where they look nice. Perhaps nice isn't the word. And now start wiring in your ribbons. Now, some people like to put all the ribbons in first. I like to put something a little bit more organised, like I know where these major features of the skulls are going. And it just gives me a better idea of where to put the bows, or the half bows. to take this deco mesh make a little loop with some wire thread it through the tree from one side to the other all the way to the bottom and occasionally you can make another little loop with some more wire wire that into place before you carry on Now I'm going to take some of these spider rings. I would imagine you can pick these up at the Dollar Tree and places like that. I got them from the range here in the UK. And I'm just going to stick these anywhere that looks a little bare. Or anywhere that needs something hidden. Because this isn't very deep, it's difficult to hide the little tails on these bows. So you can stick a spider over it. If you have more Halloween decorations, then you can absolutely plaster this with them. You can put as many on as you like. There are no rules. I like a full wreath, but you may like a simple wreath. Using my Distress Oxide stamp in Hickory Smoke, I'm just going to cover roughly over this skull, just to give it a little bit of a different look, to lift it a little bit so that it doesn't look like just a plain polystyrene skull. Put that aside to dry and we need a bow. You know me, I can't resist an excuse for a bow.
I wire the bow to the wreath because it's going to be quite heavy for the wreath to actually support and could get bumped off. And then I'm going to cover the wire and the pipe cleaner with a little purple leaf, just because I think it looks cute. Then we're going to get our head, <laughs> which definitely gives this the Halloween look. Make the hole first by pushing it on. Take it back off and pop a little bit of hot glue up inside the hole. Push it on and hold it in place. Now we neaten up our bows, cut the ends. This is so flamboyant, I think we'll dovetail it. And look at that, for a Halloween wreath. Let's have a look what this looks like up on my display. For this quick and easy Halloween craft, I've got this light. I picked this up from the car boot sale. If you turn it on, it changes colour. And I thought that would be perfect for making a Halloween ghost. I've cut out some sticky bark plastic eyes and scary mouth. Stick them onto the lamp. Now, if you can't get a lamp like this, you can buy any sort of lamp. You can even use a jam jar on a riser and put some little lights in there. One of these pound shop sets of lights. I've used this foam, cut it in half and using it as arms for my ghost. A little bit of hot glue to hold them in place. Then get this tatty cloth. I think I'm going to shred it a bit more. It's not tatty enough for me. Pop it over the head of my ghost. Using some white cotton, I'm just going to tie a little bit of tension around the neck not too tight and I've got a piece of tool lace right over the top but I'm not going to tie this into place I'm just going to let this flop where it lands I'm just going to make it sure there's only a single layer over the eyes and the mouth well that was nice and fast let's have a look what this looks like up on my display quick and easy Halloween craft I'm going to take one embroidery hoop, a scrap of white fabric, a piece of a tree, some black and purple leaves, various ribbons and an owl. You take the outer hoop off if ever you've wondered this is how you loosen and tighten the hoop so you loosen it up take it off the inner hoop I'm going to lay this fabric on to my inner hoop and then pop on the outer hoop. Tighten it up using the screw give it a gentle tug not too hard otherwise you get ripples in your fabric but give it a gentle tug just before your hoop is fully tight and now trim off all the excess on the inside if you're using a shiny or sheer fabric that's a little bit slippery then I would recommend you just run a layer of hot glue now around there to hold it in place but I'm not going to do that because I think this will be fine this is just a cotton bed sheet so plenty of gripping power there I'm going to turn this around so that the screw is at the bottom, it'll get hidden then. Then take some leaves in your chosen Halloween colour and start gluing them into place all around the outside. And now just work your way around to the top either way. You can put them all facing the same direction but I like to come up either side individually. I just think it gives it a nicer look. If you're not sure you've got enough leaves then work your way equally around both sides and then you can always leave a gap at the top and fill it with something. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I glue on my little bit of tree and then put the owl sat on the branch. Now I'm going to make a shabby bow for the bottom. Put one length of ribbon running vertically, then create a three-armed cross across the middle, pointing one way, then pointing the other, and just keep building up different bits and pieces of ribbon. Then take your vertical ribbon, tie it in a knot, and a little bit of floofing to get your bow looking extra shabby. This is also much more effective if you use floppy ribbon or floppy fabric. This is a little bit too stiff, but not stiff enough. I can't make it hold into place because it's got no wire, but it won't naturally flop. So that's the best it'll do with that ribbon. I'm happy with that though. And I'm just going to glue with this underneath the branch to finish it off. This is optional. If you don't want anything too floofy, then just leave your branch. As it is, I think it's fine. Now I'm going to use some of this for a hanger. And there we've got another quick and easy Halloween decoration. Right, let's have a look what this looks like up on my display. enjoyed this video then up there I'll put a link to other craft videos that you may be interested in and if you've enjoyed this video then please give me a thumbs up and why not subscribe it will be great for you to join me as I make lots of other crafts for all types of situations I'll see you all next time but until then don't forget have fun bye